Hello, hello. Today we're going to just take a quick look through uh, what the CGC submission process was like and uh, what grades I got will be uh, shown a little bit later in the video. I'm going to be running through the submission and kind of the timeline and, and uh, what to expect, what the service is like now that they're, you know, they've merged with uh, that other grading company or their sports cards and trading cards are the same now, um, all CGC and then the new labels too. Um, so let's get this started. So I submitted this order um, August 23rd, I believe. Um, I have a calendar here uh, kind of showing the whole timeline here. So I sent... Um, Sorry, I sent it to CGC Friday, August 18th. Uh, the submission is as follows, these six cards. Um, I did the economy tier, which is $20 a card, you know, plus there's the return shipping right there. And uh, to ship the cards to them was also around uh, 20 to $22, somewhere around there, maybe a little bit more. I did um, USPS and um, I put signature required and I insured it for the value of the cards. Technically, you don't have to do that when you send it to them. But, um, you know, I thought that some of these cards were going to get good grades. So I kind of factored that in to the value a bit. Um, so, yeah, so <clears throat> this process is pretty straightforward. As long as you know... Uh, you know, you just look up the value of the card, see what they're going for, put the declared value. Uh, when you're typing in each uh, card in the submission process, make sure that it matches the card that you're submitting, like the, the label here. Um, actually, we could probably show that if we were to start a new order here. Uh, we want grading. Okay. Uh, oh. What? How is Economy 15 a card? I'm confused. Did I pay more than I should have? Oh, it is 15. Okay. I guess I had 20 in my head. Sorry about that. <laughs> it is 15. Um, yeah, you click Add Card. You look up the card. Um, so in this case, you know... You want to find your card in here based on the year, the name, the number. Um, if you look up other cards graded by CGC of that card, you can find that pretty easily. Put in the value, add card. You kind of build your list, which is, uh, that's what this is here. Um, and yeah, that part's pretty straightforward. Once you have this, you then have to print out... Um, They'll give you the packing instructions, and you print the packing slip, and you put the packing slip in the box with the cards. You pack the cards in uh, kind of, um, uh, let me switch to the desk cam here. Um, let's say I was sending this card, and uh, this card is just what I have laying around. Uh, you would put these two, you know, you want to use a card saver, you want to use sleeves, uh, sometimes it's even nice to put a pull tab. I didn't because I don't have them. Um, but you have these two cards, and then you want to put a piece of cardboard that is the size of the card savers. You can kind of just cut out a piece of cardboard, and you put a cardboard piece here, cardboard piece here, and a rubber band around it to uh, keep it all together. And then I put bubble wrap surrounding that, put it in the box, put the packing slip in there, uh, send it to the address that is... Um, you know, described here, if you're shipping USPS, and then UPS or FedEx, there's a different address for that. So, uh, I followed that process, and sorry about uh, maybe some construction noises. I followed that process, and um, let's just take a look at the timeline here. So, I sent it to CGC. This is when I shipped it out. It was like Friday afternoon. Um, my tracking number for that package um, actually, let me switch back to desktop view here. Um, 
Yeah, I sent it to CGC on, on Friday, August 18th. Uh, Monday, it was showed delivered um, in USPS, and the tracking number showed delivered that it was picked up and signed for. So I knew that they had um, you know, kind of received it at that point. And then August 23rd, it was marked received in the... Um, Like you can look at the current status of your order, but uh, it wasn't really updating great. Um, so you can see here, um, received, submitted cards have been counted, entered, and um, yeah, so that they were just kind of received uh, August 23rd. They kind of sat there for uh, not too long, actually, and then um, all of a sudden here on the 28th, we've got scheduled for grading. Uh, that means that it was uh, described in detail, unique identification numbers, and it's like getting ready to be graded. Um, everything else here in this process was never updated, really. Um, as you can see, you know, uh, they received it here. So if we started counting the days, when I submitted, it was only a 15-day turnaround, supp supposedly. And I, I assume that's from the time they received the cards to the time they shipped the cards. So 15 days would have been, uh, let's say, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So right around here, we should have um, had the cards like graded and shipped back although there was a holiday so maybe like here because it's by business days but um around like this week here the uh the turnaround time slipped to 20 days so then if we, if we add another you know we were around here we had one two three four five okay now we're at you know that um 20 day 20 business day turnaround and uh, as you can see from the time it was received, August 23rd, I got it a month later. So, you, you know, you may be, um, you see the 20 days and you think, oh, that's not that long. But, uh, yeah, it, because of weekends and holidays and, and things like that, it is going to be a little bit longer. Um, now, the weird thing here is um, scheduled for grading, and then I just checked it every day for you know, three weeks, <laughs> just, you know, uh, what's going on guys. And then all of a sudden, um, three days ago on Thursday, it was marked graded online. And then, um, the cards just showed up Saturday. Uh, this was yesterday, August 23rd. They just showed up or sorry, September 23rd. Jesus. Uh, they, they, they just showed up. I never got a tracking number. It was never marked shipped. Um, you know, and once it was like graded, I was like, oh, can I look up what the grades are? And uh, and you read into here and you won't get um, any information supposedly uh, until it's shipped. But uh, my order was never marked shipped. So I never saw like pictures ahead of time. So it just kind of showed up as like a mystery box. I didn't know to expect it here. Um, apparently the shipping label that's on this package says it was shipped the 19th, which is actually before it was marked graded. And then, you know, there were times it did deliver, but I had no idea it was actually coming. I, I, I didn't know, so I didn't prepare for that, nor could I, because I was, I was working. But thankfully they came back and uh, they delivered it here. I had to sign for it, and I was kind of anxious about that uh, because if CGC shipped it out, you know, here, let's say, and then I was, I, and I was, you know, it was during the week, maybe FedEx would only try three times, and then I don't know what would happen. I don't know if I would get a slip or something, because I never saw a slip here, but um, on the package it says that it was scheduled for delivery here, and was actually delivered here and thankfully I was home this Saturday that does not always the case um, so yeah I was just really anxious about being there for the package so I could sign for it and get it and uh, that's kind of one of the reasons why I only did a small submission because um, I was a little anxious about the
the cards getting there safe, the cards getting back to me safe, and I knew that they'd be there for a long time. So I was a little bit worried about that. Um, but at the end of the day, it worked out. It took about a month when originally it was a 15-day turnaround time on the website, um, which, of course, then it went to 20 days. But um, overall, um, I just wish some of that tracking towards the end of the process was done better. And they didn't, you know, um, everything worked out but I wish I knew that they were coming and that I could plan for it better. Um, so yeah, uh, I think that pretty much covers like the submission process, the timeline, and uh, what it's looking like now. Um, are you guys ready to see these cards? <laughs> uh, let, me pull, uh, let me pull up the camera here. This is our wonderful desk cam. Let me get the box out here. So I only submitted six. Okay. Came back in this box here. Um, and uh, probably the best thing to do is just front to back. And uh, yeah. Let's start here. So these are going to be in reverse order from. Uh, what they were on screen there. So here's our first card here, and hopefully I can uh, get this camera to focus. Come on, you can do it. Okay, it's apparently not focusing at all. Nope, that's not right. Hey, there we go. Okay, <laughs> all right, so. Things that I looked for in a card. Um, I was looking for relatively good centering, and I wanted to. Um, I made sure that there was no whitening. That was also very important to me. Um, I wanted the submission to be like a very good submission. Um, it's not as like clean as you would expect for like a brand new slab, but that's okay. It's, oops, just some box dust and stuff. But um, as you can see, you know these these cards I, I sent them were in you know basically perfect condition um, I don't know like what the subgrades would have been because um, there was something that wasn't perfect I mean I guess the, uh, the centering was pretty good on this so I don't really know um, and it was kind of like a fresh pull and I don't really see any surface issues so um, I'm happy with the 10 though on that so that was that was really nice. This one, I was really surprised that we pulled a 9.5. Um, so I actually bought the deck uh, for this, which is kind of wild. Um, I think the deck cost me like $120. I picked it up at an auction. And when I opened the card, I was like, the hollow is really nice. I mean, it, it's, you know, the, the surface was in good condition. The centering is pretty good. Um, you know, it wasn't exposed or anything, so there's really no fading. Um, this is from 2005. And uh, the back was basically perfect, but there was one little nick in the bottom right where there was a little bit of whitening. Um, and that's just because of, like, how it was in the deck. And... Um, then there's like some fuzzies there in the top right. So it wasn't perfect, but it was fresh out of a deck box. Um, so I was, I was, I thought I was maybe going to get a nine. So I'm pretty happy with the nine five. This is a new nine five. So it's not a 10. It is a nine five. Um, but that's pretty exciting to get vintage in a high grade like that. Speaking of vintage in a high grade, um, I picked up this, uh, I think I might have spent like around $120 on it. It's probably worth about $160. This was a, a near mint Scyther EX from 2004. A little bit of box less on there. I looked at this card and I was like, this thing is absolutely gorgeous. Um, basically pack fresh. There was uh, really no nicks on it, honestly. I, I think it could have gem tend. Um... I know some people talk about 
how uh, they don't want to submit like vintage and modern in the same order because of the you know the grading like they they don't I don't know I don't really know <laughs> much about it this is my first submission but I have seen online people talk about um, not submitting modern and vintage together or Japanese and English together I didn't really follow that uh, I just kind of threw everything in there and you know it's a really high grade for a vintage card like this um, I do wish that it tend but um, I'll take it definitely much like the the Dark Dragonite, I didn't, I didn't expect a 10, let's say. This one, I definitely expected a 10. Um, I picked this one up for about 50 bucks, which is about market. Um, I really, I saw the centering on it. I was like, that's perfect. That's kind of hard to find. Um, I saw, you know, the back was absolutely perfect. There was no necks whatsoever. So uh, for this to get a 10, that's perfectly deserved. 10. So, really sick. I love this art. Um, also, the fact that it is in a 10, that usually makes it really hard to get a, a high grade. So, um, that's also kind of, like, really nice. And, uh, and here we go. Now we start our Japanese. Now, I'm not going to reveal the uh, last card just yet. Because the last card, as soon as you see it, um, it's kind of wild. So, I'm going to put that off to the side for now. All right, so here we have Elisa Sparkle. This is from the one bo um, booster box of E-Star Universe that I opened. Um, that was like around a release date I opened that. Um, the card was in like really good shape and it's a valuable card. And uh, I was like, might as well send it in. You know, people like the waifus and stuff. So I don't really know uh, if I'm gonna hold on to this one or try and uh, flip it, but uh, definitely, a uh, very nice 10. Um, yep, definitely deserving of a 10. Now, <laughs> I opened some Ruler of the Black Flame, as you saw there on the top of that uh, submission list while we were going through everything. And um, I pulled this on a, a Whatnot stream, actually. Uh, the guy was super cool. Uh, West Coast Exchange on whatnot, if you want to check them out. Um, I think it was a really affordable rip till you hit maybe $30, $40, something like that, I think. And we just started ripping some ruler, and we ended up pulling the Charizard. I was, I was like, <laughs> it was insane. And I couldn't believe it. Um... And this was like the main thing that kind of like triggered me to go and submit some cards because of this bad boy. I mean, I looked at this card once I got it um, and I was like, this thing could not be more perfect. I mean, it just looked absolutely gorgeous. The surface had like no imperfections. The centering was good. There was nothing on the back. You know, there was no whitening whatsoever. And I was just like, oh, I was just like, I got to send this thing in. And, uh, but if I'm going to send one card in, I might as well send a few more. And so, you know, I put together the small submission, you know, it included modern vintage and uh, modern Japanese. And uh, just to kind of get a good feel for, based on what I'm seeing, because I only submitted cards that I knew would get high grades and that were, you know, relatively valuable. Um, so uh, because of that, you know, we were able to, we were able to do this, like, and get, like, really good grades, nice and concise. Uh, could I have added more cards? Probably. It probably would have been nice to do 10. Um, I think that's what can fit in these boxes. I'm not, not really sure. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. They might do 12 or 10. Probably they don't do the end ones, so probably 10 slabs in there. And, uh, but yeah, I'm just I'm super excited. I don't know if this thing will focus again so that you can see all of the cards together. Um, actually, I could take this off the mount too and just, okay. hopefully, uh, 
of which show. I know there's a bit of a reflection there and whatnot, but um, it was just an absolutely amazing submission. I I was uh, speechless that I received it randomly and so happy with the grades that I received, especially as a first time submitter with CGC and, you know, not not really making everything perfect, but somehow managing to get uh, good grades was just amazing. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's that's about it. That's the process. That's the grades we got. Um, you know, would I submit again? Uh, I think so. I think I want to move first um, because I, I don't want to send it there and then end up, you know, uh, moving before I get them back because I think I would do an economy submission and the current uh, turnaround times on that um, I think is pretty it's like 40 days out maybe um, I'm not really sure right now let me just take that quick so I'm telling you guys the right thing um, where is Current turnaround times, there we go. 40 days, yeah. I'm just gonna show you that real quick. It's 40 days on the bulk tier, and that would be getting me the best fee for per card, but um, I think that this 40 days would turn into two months, I would say, because um, there's only like 20 uh, working days in a month, usually around that. Um, plus or minus the shipping there and the shipping back. So yeah, I think you're looking at two months there and uh, that just run a little tight. So uh, I'm probably gonna hold off for now, but I'm, I was super excited to get the submission and uh, share this with you guys. So uh, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you found this video to be useful. Um, and uh, that'll do it for now. So uh, Charizard's gonna send us out here. <laughs> Pristine 10. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I will see you guys.